Welcome to Earth's Mightiest Weirdos. I don't think I'll ever stop talking about how much I love that intro. We've got a bigger panel than usual. Anthony, how are you doing this evening? Hey, Anthony, is that you? <laughs> I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this, but you're making me, and I'll never forgive you. <laughs> I asked for volunteers, and you were the first to do so. Yeah, that I'm not a smart person, what can I say? <laughs> I am not fast. Back for her second week in a row, Sarah at the Nerd Emporium. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm ready to get canceled tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so, Let me turn my light on here. There we go. Now you can see my ugly face. Jalen, second week in a row as well. Jalen, how are you tonight? Good. Nervous. But ready, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, I think we're all a little bit nervous. And Ryan, I expect Alligator Loki to at least break the top 10. Yeah, I wouldn't count on that. We're probably going to break some hearts and piss some people off tonight. So. <laughs> right. Awesome. I love it. Well, let's get into it. First and foremost, back to usual. We've got the world according to Jax. Hello, Jax. So we are going to talk about ranking MCU films tonight, and you are going to give us your top five MCU films total, correct? All right. So what is number five? Number five is um, Captain America, the Civil War. Captain America, Civil War. Okay. Talk into the microphone, okay? Um, All right. So Captain America, Civil War. What do you like about that movie? I don't know. I just... I just really like all the characters in it and the action. Okay. Uh, number four. Um, Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is number four? Holy cow. That's <laughs> way different than me. I got Doctor Strange. We're going to talk about him soon. That's cool, though. I like that. Why do you, like, why do you have it that high? Because um, when I first found out, when I uh, found out of it, the character from this movie, it, um, I just really like all the magic and um and i re i just really liked it you like him okay yeah all right what about number three number three was avengers endgame avengers endgame coming in at number three what's your favorite part of that movie um i don't know all right fair enough well how about number two number two was spider-man no way home spider-man no way home what's your favorite part of that movie You like all the three Peters hanging out together? Yeah. Yeah. And then number one, your favorite Marvel film or TV show of all time? Black Panther. Black Panther comes in at number one. What do you like about Black Panther? You just like the character or more than that? I like uh, everything in this movie, but mostly him because he's my favorite character. He's your favorite character. I remember how much you cried when he turned to dust at Avengers Infinity War. I remember. War. Too. Yeah. <laughs> right, well, thanks, buddy. You're welcome, Dad. All right. All right. He was thinking about it all day. I didn't even know the top five, but Black Panther coming in at number one. I do expect Black Panther to be one of the highest rated films among all of us, but there is absolutely no time to waste. We are going an hour early. Let's check in with the comments first. We've got Justin Grant already weighing in with Thor The Dark World coming in at number 32. Mousepiration Mike, thanks for joining us. Says Dark World wasn't that bad. No, it's not that bad, but when you compare it to the other 31 projects in the MCU, it might be. Uh, Mousepiration Mike says it's in New York. He hates it. Alligator Loki, dung concept, and yuck. Ooh, I disagree. Uh, but Ryan very well could agree. Greg okay. from the Disney Fanatics is here. The correct answer is Howard the Duck. Uh, I like that. Allison is here. Thank you so much, Allison. Good to have everybody here. Katie's here. Kara is here. She's got the whole family watching tonight. Kara is going to get upset. <laughs> <laughs> so, so much fun. So definitely play along with us in the comments. We want to know what your rankings are. We do have five challenge cards from everybody in this game tonight, because if we want people to explain why they have something ranked at a specific spot at any given moment, that could very well end very poorly and would go on forever. Sarah has already given up. She has <laughs> left the entire stream. We will get Sarah back here in just a minute. I know she has some challenges with her Wi-Fi 
Um, so let's get into it. Sarah is back. We'll get her back in there. Um, so Anthony, let's start with you. Um, how did you come up with this list? What were some things you took into consideration? And then, like I said, everybody has five explain it to me cards and you will see how we will use those throughout the evening. But Anthony, how did you create this list other than how hard it is? Uh, I just had to go with whatever I wanted to watch more. You know, if I had to go through all 32 projects, which one do I want to watch the most? Which one do I want to watch the least? So re rewatchability, basically. Yeah, which all right. it, it it was hard to add the TV shows because rewatching a TV show with, you know, six, eight, nine episodes is a lot different than watching a two hour movie. So, that, yes, that was a little difficult as well. So I had to, I had to boil that down to, you know, the top two or three episodes. So that's fair. Jalen, how about you? How did you how did you determine your list? So I um, ended up breaking out each phase and then ranking each movie or show from that phase. And then that kind of helped me put everything together. So that was my plan, but it was still impossible. So that we'll was see what we get. That's a that's a good approach. I, I like <laughs> that. I like that a lot. Ryan, how about you? Yeah, I kind of did similar to Anthony. I just did it based on rewatchability and also, you know, my initial reaction upon leaving the theater and seeing it. Um, that has a big impact on the scores. And Sarah, how about you? How did you rank these things? Uh, Rewatchability, but also uh, bigger picture, what it meant for the MCU and, you know, um, not just MCU ramifications, but like if they introduced new characters and and how excited I was um, when the movie came out. So I, I, I couldn't just do rewatchability. I, I don't know. I had to make it more complicated. As I I'm, to. I'm with you. I had three <laughs> different levels. Like rewatchability was up there. But then we got to the point where you could tell me I could sit down and if you play any of the top 20, I'm good. So I had to go with first viewing experience as well. Played a massive yeah played a massive role in there for me and then the last one is is just like you said sarah the greater meaning within the mcu and just kind of everything that comes from there sarah is getting us started or kara excuse me is getting us started right <laughs> off the top with what if coming in at number 32 not surprising to me um number 32 anthony what if shocking <laughs> sarah number 32 incredible hulk I also have the Incredible Hulk at number 32. Ryan? The Incredible Hulk. The Incredible Hulk. And Jalen? Same. Hulk. The, the Incredible Hulk. Kara is very proud of Anthony. <laughs> As we gave Holly an aneurysm, she literally went and got a pen and paper to write all the movies to rank them. Good luck, Please Holly. Us know. Yeah, it is <laughs> I legit. It took me hours to do this, like thinking about it throughout the weekend. Okay, we will start back at number 31. Justin Grant had this one at his number 32. I have Thor the Dark World at 31. Anthony? Thor the Dark World as well. Sarah? Same. Jalen? Thor, Dark World. Ryan? Thor the Dark World. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> the, only category, the only one that's probably going to match all five. The, yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, that means Anthony has the Incredible Hulk in his top 30. I love it. Number 30 for me is Marvel Studios' What If. I just don't want to watch it as much as I do anything else within the MCU other than The Incredible Hulk and Thor The Dark World. Uh, Jalen, how about you? What do you got at number 30? I'm with you. I got What If. Same right. reasons. Ryan? I um, think we're going to have a hot take here. Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy Volume 2. At 30? At 30. All right, I'm using my I'm using <laughs> I'm using my first one. Why don't you explain this to me like I'm five? <laughs> Why is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two your thirtieth ranked project? Um, there are just twenty nine other things I would rather watch than that movie. I like the individual characters in the Guardians franchise. I just the the second movie has some comedy. It just didn't do it for me story wise. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't have it that high, but I don't have it at 30. Uh, I mean, I just wasted a card. I feel like you didn't explain it well enough, but fine. <laughs> I mean, for me, I, I, I don't love Quill. Um, I, I don't love Yondu. 
Um, I, I like Rocket. I like Groot. I like Nebula. I like Gamora. And I don't love Drax either. So, you know, it's just kind of a franchise that has half the players I love, half of them I don't. So, so when you Ego? Go? He was a super good dad, though. <laughs> when Yondu died, you didn't care? Obviously, I did. And that was that was only, the only reason it was ranked above Thor the Dark World is because of that last scene with, uh, with Yondu and the Mary Poppins, y'all. <laughs> oh, Ryan. All right. I feel like Ryan just wanted to create controversy. Okay. <laughs> no, I did the, the ranking thing that Anthony sent, and it that's where I put it. All right. <laughs> Ryan has Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Jalen and I, with What If at 30, Sarah. Ant-Man. Ant-Man Ooh. 1? Wow. Sorry. I'm sorry. I know. Anthony, <laughs> is, <laughs> Anthony is challenging. Uh, Ant-Man 1? I get it. Wow. 2, but... Ant Man one, I know. I kn- I just okay. If if I was just basing this on rewatchability, it would be higher up. Um, but the I I, I just I need you don't... to read your screen right now. <laughs> Sarah is saying no, Sarah Marie. I'm sorry, Ant Man and the Wasp is higher up on my list, but I just I. I didn't connect with it story-wise as much as the second one. Um, I know that it. I know that you know we wouldn't have been able to progress in the MCU without Ant Man. I recognize that. Um, I just. I don't. I don't like it as much as the other ones. I have Ant Man. I have Ant Man one much higher than thirty. Uh, David Rosen says I don't have enough thumbs in to watch the new killing. <laughs> Anthony, what do you have at number 30? Black Panther. I'm kidding. I just <laughs> uh, it's Incredible Hulk. <laughs> all right. So we have all now gotten Thor the Dark World and Incredible Hulk off of our list. Ryan still hasn't given us what if, neither has Sarah. Number 29, sticking with where Sarah is, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Uh, just it, it falling in right after Avengers Infinity War. It just, it was fighting a battle that it was not ready to fight. Anthony, number 29. Uh, Captain Marvel. Sarah. That's fair. Um, A- Iron Man 3. Iron Man 3. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Well, I'm going to gonna handle it. All right. Uh, Iron Man 3. Okay, so Captain Marvel... I'm gonna. I'm not gonna use a, a a challenge card here. It it was in the same spot as Ant Man and the Wasp was, like just coming in right before Avengers Endgame. Jalen, what do you have at twenty nine? I have Iron Man two Ugh. at twenty nine. Wow, <laughs> as do I. All right, you thank also you, have Ryan. Iron Man two at twenty nine. I do. All right. Hmm. Anthony, is that you? No love for Justin Hammer. It's not oh. him. I like yeah. him in the movie. I just Matt is on my side. Iron Man three slander. <laughs> Iron Man three came in way too high on my list, and I will fully, fully admit it's probably too high. <laughs> I love Trevor Slattery. Um, the only shining part of Iron Man two is Justin Hammer, in, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, Mickey Rourke. Yeah. Mickey Rourke's a tough one in that film. I mean, okay. We'll get to it later. It's fine. <laughs> Sarah, what was it? Twenty nine for you. Twenty nine. Uh, Iron Man three. Iron Man. That's right. Okay. Number twenty eight. Kara, get ready. Anthony, number twenty eight for you. Black Widow. Wow. Twenty eight. Oh. Yeah. Captain Marvel at twenty nine and Black Widow at twenty eight. I'm not saying anything. Yeah. I'm just saying something. Hmm. <laughs> Sarah, don't you dare. Sarah, twenty eight. <laughs> Uh, 28, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Okay, so you have Ant-Man low in both spots. All right, Ryan, number 28. Um, I have the first Thor at 28. Okay. Jalen. I have Guardians 2. Okay, so you're down there with Ryan. Mm-hmm. At 28, I have the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Oof. Oh, that hurts there, my there heart. Right, right hurts. off of that ledge. The the, the the villains, the flag smashers were not interesting at all. Aaron Kellyman was not interesting at all. I think if they had their their virus, their weapon of of 
biological warfare, which I believe was very much a part of the series before COVID yeah. hit. <laughs> I think that would have made it far, far more interesting. There was so much good that Sam saw in her that she didn't have. They tried to play a redemption arc that didn't work for me. Sam's suit is awesome. There's some really good stuff with Sam and Bucky. But beyond that, the rest of the series, the Sharon Carter stuff is terrible. It's terrible. Not that bad. And it was I, bad. The I, have stuff zero, was bad. I have zero interest in rewatching The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. It's it's all over Ugh. the place a little bit. Just wait till I get to my ranking for both Kara, that and Captain Marvel. Kara, <laughs> Kara is left done. The chat. <laughs> Jim, dancing Zemo alone is worth yes, Jim. But Zemo was also underutilized in that in that show. I I struggle I struggle with that show. I do. There's some good stuff, but I just. I just don't like the Falcon and the Winter Soldier compared to other things. Would I much rather watch the Falcon and the Winter Soldier over many other things? <clears throat> Justice League? Yes, I would. <laughs> but we're whoa, talking whoa. MCU stuff here. We are talking MCU, but I would rather watch Peacemaker than the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Okay, everybody has given their 28. Uh, number 27, Iron Man 2. Justin Hammer can only save so much. Uh, Jalen, where are you at with number 27? Uh, 27, I have Doctor Strange. Okay. That hurts. I've used I've used an explain card. Ryan has used an explain card. That's where we stand so far. Ryan, number 27. Doesn't sound like it's Doctor Strange. Uh, no, it is not. Uh, I have Ant-Man and the Wasp at 27. Okay. Sarah? The first Thor. Okay. Anthony? Doctor Strange. All right. I will stick with Sarah at 26. I have Thor 1. Number 26, I have Thor 1. Sarah really looks like she doesn't want to give us her answer to 26, so I'm going to go straight to Sarah with number 26. Uh, I'm going to preface this by saying I will make up for it later, Kara. I promise. Iron Man 1. Whoa. I know. I, know. I will make up for it later. I'll do I'll do my I'll do Morris. Trust me. I request a Morris. <laughs> Jalen wants elaboration. <laughs> I the, have you done Iron Man two or three yet? I did. I did Iron Man three. Iron okay. Man two is way up on my list. So, um, we'll, so we'll use another card later. <laughs> that, <yeah. laughs> you know why? Um, Iron Man. I mean, you you have to remember that this this list is full of some of the greatest movies of the last twenty years, ten years. So, <laughs> I I just. I know that it was the one that kicked everything off, and I love Tony. I love Tony's story. I love Pepper. Um, I just, I, I have Iron Man two way up on my list, so I didn't want to. Um, I'll explain more later. Iron Man one at twenty six. Oh, That's the hottest take. So that is, I'm sorry, Anthony twenty six. Uh, Iron Man three. Okay, Jalen. Well, this could also be a hot one. Um, I have Guardians. Guardians from one the galaxy. One? Yes, one. <laughs> I've already listed two. I'm assuming that's in Brian's top five. Because <laughs> I know how much Brian likes Guardians. Okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm playing I'm playing my second card. I request a level. <laughs> Jalen, the just the Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume One is oh, it's so good. I I'm not saying it's bad. I mean, all these movies are not you know bad movies. Right. They're all good movies. It's just mm. if I'm gonna rewatch um, an ensemble movie, it's not gonna be the Guardians. They're just not my favorite. I don't kind of like what Ryan said. You know, them together just doesn't work for me. I like them separately. <laughs> Sorry, Justin. <laughs> says, almost time to break out the hard liquor. <laughs> Alex says he's <laughs> Team Sarah that Iron Man 2 is his favorite Iron Man. But Alex, do you have Iron Man at number 26? <laughs> he, he did tell us a while ago that he didn't think Iron Man was as good after doing a rewatch. So Sorry. Matt, Matt, Matt is with me so far. Jalen, that one, I that know, one it's legitimately. Just Guardians, just they're just not my favorite. And if I'm rewatching, like I said, a movie, it's just not going to be Guardians. 
I love the music, though. I listen to the soundtrack all the time. That's my favorite part. Adult Groot is better than Baby Groot. <laughs> yes. Ryan, 26. Number 26, I have Black Widow. Okay. All right. Now, I, I'm just now remembering why Sarah would have Iron Man 2 so high. Now I understand. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. So I had I had Thor at 26. I'm going to have to start just going in the same order every time because I keep getting confused as to who I've gone to. So I apologize. Uh, number 25 for me, Captain Marvel. It fell at a weird time. It had a lot of expectations that it just couldn't yeah. live up to. I, I, I like the character fine, um, but I'm far more interested in the future of the character than I was the story from 1993 in Blockbuster Video. Anthony, number 25. I've got Guardians 2. Okay. Sarah, 25. Uh, end game. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Dr. Strange. Dr. Strange at 25. Yeah. Jalen. Yeet uh, my computer out the window. <laughs> <laughs> no more lying. No more lying. Uh, 25, I have Ant-Man and the Wasp. That's, that's high, honestly. Okay. Ryan? Number 25, I have What If. Okay. Sarah is the only one now to not give us What If. Uh, <laughs> Justin says 26, The Eternals. That is going to be a hot topic of conversation this evening, as you can see. What? In Sarah's mm -hmm. face, Alex says <laughs> Iron Man are closer to the bottom for him, and they are not bad movies. That is the thing. Mm -hmm. Like these yeah. movies, this is why this was so difficult. Like I've given so much thought to my top ten that actually wasn't as hard for me. But this middle of the pack stuff was super, super difficult. Yep. Oh yeah. All right. So everybody has given their 25. 24. I have Doctor Strange. So now I think Ryan is the only one that hasn't given us that either. Anthony, 24. Wait. Uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Sarah, 24. Uh, Guardians, 1. I will redeem <laughs> myself later. I swear to God. Please. <laughs> you <laughs> haven't said what if yet. I don't think you are. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. So that's both Guardians are off the list for Sarah as well. Mm, no. Uh, oh, you uh, haven't given volume two yet? Okay. I think it's just me with both Guardians so far. Jane. Sorry. 24, I have Thor. 24, you have Thor. Okay. Not just because it rhymed. <laughs> 24 for Thor. Kara says Eternals is bottom 10 for sure. I should have gotten Sarah and Kara just to talk about Eternals <laughs> alone. <laughs> Ryan, number 24. Uh, I have the first Iron Man at 24. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Justin has Falcon and Winter Soldier at 24. Okay. Holly says she finally wrote it all out. It is not easy. It absolutely mm -hmm. is not easy, Holly. Thank you. Know. Number 23, Eternals. I have Eternals at 23. Hold up. I need to <laughs> be honest Hold up. at me with a baseball bat. <laughs> it's. It has pacing issues. I'm not entertained throughout the entire film. There are times where I get a little bit bored. There are some really interesting characters, some interesting story arcs. If Eternals was a 10-part Disney Plus series focused on each character as you go piecing a story together, I think it would be one of the best things that Marvel Studios has ever done. However, I think the amount of stuff that they try to put into one film and with the amount of not ignoring the MCU is not the right way to put it because they don't ignore the MCU at all. But I, I would have been interested in seeing the Eternals vantage point of events within the MCU, at least the snap, if nothing else, because um, does the snap affect the Eternals? We never really got that answered. Um, I'm not. I don't know. Like, I'm interested in the characters, but I'm far more interested in the future of these characters just like I was with Captain Marvel. So I've got Eternals at 23 because everything else above it is just more rewatchable and a better first viewing experience for me. How'd I do? Fair. It's okay that you're wrong. <laughs> it's okay that I'm wrong. Anthony, number 23. Captain America. One? Yeah. Okay. Just all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just love all three. Just 
Alex says, let me know when we get into the top five so we can talk about Eternal. <laughs> we just did. We just did. Sarah, number 23. Uh, far from home. Okay. Jalen? I have Civil War. It hurts, but... Okay, I'll Anthony, tell you... Anthony's challenging. I... It's... Like I said, they're all good movies. I just... I don't like them fighting each other. It just hurts. <laughs> just <no matter. laughs> it just hurts too bad watching them fight each other. But I know it's a really important movie going into Infinity War and Endgame. But I just, I just don't like them fighting. It just makes me so sad. I mean, Alex says that the snap didn't affect the Eternals because they aren't living things. I mean, there's that's. I mean, there's there's validity to that. But there were still people around. I don't yeah, know. I have the questions that. Do they did the snap affect animals? Yes. Yes. It affected Thanos' ship. Animals yeah. use because didn't those birds come back? Yeah. Oh exactly. yeah, the birds came back. All right. Fascinating. I'm an idiot. Captain uh, <laughs> America: Civil War, just from an emotional standpoint, is why is, I man, it's the introduction of Spider-Man into the MCU, and yeah. there's some really good Spider-Man stuff in that film. Ryan, number twenty-three. <laughs> Uh, I'm genuinely afraid to give this answer. You might kick me off the podcast. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. Uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. Get out. Oh. Uh, <laughs> that has been Ryan on the show. Um, <laughs> Spider-Man Homecoming, you have at 23? I do. Michael Keaton's Vulture makes it a top half film at the very least with the without anything Spider-Man related whatsoever. Uh, I disagree. Kate um, Burns said Michael Jordan, number 23. <laughs> I, love I love it. I just, I think that both the other Spider-Man movies are stronger. It's a great movie. Mm -hmm. I'll watch it anytime it's on. It just, it had to fit in somewhere and that's where it fit. Ooh. Huh. Far from home with Sarah felt a little bit low to me, but so you have our far from home higher. That's interesting. I do. For me, it was a villain tiebreaker there. I like yeah. I like Vulture more than I do Mysterio, and I really like Mysterio. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. but I I mean I'm not going to talk about Homecoming for a while. Um, I'm throwing out the rule of challenge cards. Like you can challenge as many times as we need to because <laughs> okay. I think we're all being judicious enough with it that we're not going to make this podcast seven hours. Only a few. Kara says <laughs> Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. <laughs> uh, Matt is not your fan, Jalen. You have you have I'm set Matt. Sorry, Matt. Really <laughs> Esther says Toby Maguire is the ultimate Spider-Man. Ooh. Mm. This that's that's coming Ooh. on a future episode of Earth Spideys Weirdos. Okay, number 22. My first Avengers film, and I have Avengers Age of Ultron at 22. What? what? Hold up, Morris. <laughs> I I like Avengers Age of Ultron. I do, especially with everything, the birth of Vision, the introduction of Wanda. I like Avengers Age of Ultron a lot. But if we're going to talk about pacing issues, especially when you put it up against other things like it, I thought all this stuff with Dr. Helen Cho was unnecessary, except obviously for the birth of Vision. But I think they spent a little too much time on a character that ended up not mattering as much to the film. Sarah, go ahead. Did you? I thought you said the first Avengers. No, Avengers Age of Ultron. Oh, okay. I, I retract Beyonce. We're good. Oh, no. <laughs> Avengers 1 is coming very, very much later. than. Okay. Oh, I thought you were going to say very soon. The first, of, the, first of, <laughs> the first of the four Avengers films on my list is Avengers Age of Ultron. Gotcha. Okay. I'm talking about the birth of Vision and Wanda, and she's like, that is not Avengers 1. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Anthony, number, the 20, same movies? number 22, <laughs> Anthony. Uh, number 22, I have Falcon and Winter Soldier. All right. Jay, I, dude, Jalen's going to have it in her top 10. And <laughs> I'm going to absolutely throw a challenge card at that. <laughs> uh, Sarah, number 22. Captain Marvel. I would love to hear what you went through of putting Captain Marvel at 22, because I know you wanted to put it higher. You just felt you couldn't. Yeah. Um. I, I come from the vantage point of, uh, I mean, for, <laughs> I always thought that Black Widow should have been the one to get her, her movie 
before, you know, I thought she should have been the female superhero that they put out there first. But um, I, I also, Captain Marvel is like one of my top five comic characters of all time, female comic characters. Um, so my expectations were probably a little bit high. Um, I just, I didn't like that it was a prequel. I, they did a good job making it a prequel. Um, I mean, I, I thought it's an, it's a decent film. It just, it just kind of, it really fell flat for me. I love, I love Brie Larson. She does a great job, but. Yeah. Fair enough. It's, it's got one of my favorite Stan Lee cameos of him on the subway. Oh, I know. Rehearsing yeah. small rats. And it, it gave us the, uh, Stan Lee Marvel Studios intro. Um, yeah. but several of us have said Captain Marvel now in our, in the twenties. Yeah. So Jalen, number 22. I have Ant-Man at 22. It's too low. Ryan, number 22. 22, I have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. (laughs) (laughs) At number 21, I finally have to do it. Well, I panicked, but then I handled it. Trevor Slattery can only carry the film so far. I... Advanced idea mechanics. I wish they had held on to aim for later in the MCU. I think it was a wasted yep. one film and done approach with how big aim should be. I have Iron Man three at 21. Anthony. I have Avengers age of Ultron, right. which is the second Avengers, Sarah, not the first one. <laughs> <laughs> Just to clarify. Okay. Sarah 21. Uh Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Jalen, 21. Uh, I also have Iron Man 3. Ryan? I also have Iron Man 3. All right. See, I'm not so high on Iron Man 3 compared to other people. Um, <laughs> Ryan, have you given the Falcon and the Winter Soldier yet? I have not. Okay. At number 20. Thanks, Ryan. At number we'll 20. Be next. We have entered the top 20. I have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Again, the pacing gets a little bit slow, and then Nebula shows up and tries to blast Gamora off of the face of the planet, and then it never stops from that point on. Um, Baby Groot is good, but he was a marketing ploy. Anthony, number 20. (laughs) Loki. He's changing his list. Whoa, Loki. Uh, I second that. I also have Loki. I also Loki. have Loki. At 20? Yeah. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> it's, it's, it, never mind. I don't have to explain myself. Nobody's playing. Oh, all three of all three. <laughs> of it's, it's, a good, it's a good show. It's my least favorite live action show that we've gotten so far. So I had to rank the other ones higher. This is just where it was. Justin has Ant-Man and the Wasp at 21. I want to throw mm-hmm. an elaboration on that. Why don't you explain this to me like I'm five? Come on. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Matt, again. But you're ignoring somebody has Shang-Chi at 21? Yeah, well, yes. Holly has Shang-Chi at 21. Uh, <laughs> Loki is criminally underrated by the three of you. It's not. Nothing. It's not. I mean, it. no, don't do that to me. <laughs> it's a good show. I just don't need to rewatch it. I know what happens. Yeah, I think it has some slight pacing issues as well. And I'm just too stupid. So I don't, it's too smart for me. <laughs> I can't follow timelines and, and what, and portals. And I rewatched <laughs> that finale recently. Jonathan Majors is so good in that finale as he who remains. So yeah. good. So good. All right. So Loki, Sarah, what was your 20? Uh, 20 is for me, homecoming. Mm. <laughs> Okay. That also hurts. Okay. Spider-Man Homecoming again <laughs> far too low. We still will not get to it for a while on my part. Number 19. Anthony already said it. Captain America, the first Avenger. I think the stuff that we get from Peggy Carter in that is really good. Um, Sarah brought to my attention. Was it no, it was Maya that brought it to our attention last week that uh, maybe Cap and Peggy get together a little too quickly, uh, but it still works for me. Um, Captain America, the first Avenger, lots of good stuff in it, but I prefer the other two Captain America films to it. 
Um, and we're really splitting hairs here because I really love the first Captain yeah. America. Anthony, 19. Iron Man, 2. Okay. That's that's high. Okay. What's Sarah. Up, Sarah? Um, also, the first Avenger, Captain America. Jaylen. But I love it. 19, I have Eternals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony and Sarah are going to have Eternals very high. Like top 10, I think. Mainly because we don't know if Icarus survives. And I need confirmation. <laughs> Once I get confirmation, it will jump higher. Uh, we <laughs> have <what>? three <laughs> consecutive Black Panther Ooh. and 19 in the comments. Wow. wow. So that's those are some hot takes. Now people are just doing it. Hawkeye. Right. Oh, there's yep. There's another one. Uh, right. Hawkeye getting its first mention bad. in the comments. Stephanie says, no. can we start over? Uh, it'll be different than it has been. I guarantee. <laughs> I'll something. Um, I've already changed something on my list since we've started. Um, okay. Um, Eternals. Ryan, nineteen. Nineteen. I have Spider-Man: Far From Home. You are undervaluing this character. Oh, we'll we'll see about that. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, at number eighteen, I I do have Spider-Man: Far From Home. At 18. You're undervaluing him at 19. <laughs> 18. The next, the next thing. You've already given two of his movies. I've only given one, and they were higher than the other two. I have Spider Man Far From Home. I think there's some really good stuff in it. I do think that Edith being out there during Avengers Endgame when it really could have helped, and then all of a sudden using it three months later, it doesn't really work for me. Um, but, and the fact that Peter's trying to hide his identity and just sits around in a bar without his mask on when he's the night monkey. It's a little bit weird, but the barf stuff, the stuff with um, everything and the vendetta that I, cause I was very upset that we were going to have Quentin Beck being pulled in from another universe and the snap and everything else. The fact that that was all just a big lie. And that was the whole thing. I loved that. I think Jake Gyllenhaal is that character was fantastic. Um, but Spider-Man far from home, 18 Anthony. Also far from home. Sarah? 18, Loki. So you got mad at them for 20. I thought I was... Yeah. I I was <laughs> all right, fine. Jalen? I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I have Ragnarok. Oh! oh I request a level. <laughs> Why don't you it's explain just... some more like I'm five? <laughs> it's just because the other 17 projects I just like more. And watched more i when i was looking at the list i realized i haven't seen ragnarok that many times i've only seen it like twice mm. and it's not because i don't like it that's a <laughs> you just, problem Jalen. you need it's a me problem i i'm gonna make sure that you don't get to see <laughs> love and thunder until it's been out for at least two and a half weeks <laughs> to be fair i also didn't see ragnarok in theaters but i wasn't an mcu person at that time uh, so. where's the melty justin, stick justin says the grandmaster will see you now the melt stick he's telling you to get thank out. you kara for being on my uh, side she said she knew that was coming jalen is not wrong kara no jalen is wrong it's just that you're also wrong <laughs> uh, uh, Ryan- it's, just, it's so hard because like they're all just so good I thought we had another few minutes before we got to Ragnarok. Uh, Ryan, uh, Alex says he needs to rewatch because he loved it when it came out, but it has been a while. Matt says he's rewatched Ragnarok more than any of the others. Yeah, Matt, Matt and Jalen just are not meshing. Ryan, <laughs> Sorry, Matt. Ryan, number 18. It, it, it's 18. a great rewatch. It's so uh, good. I have my first audible that I called. I put Ant Man at 18. Mm. Okay. Uh, I'll stick with that. I have Ant-Man at 17, which rounds out. That is the top spot in the bottom half. 17, Anthony. We got Hawkeye. Okay. Sarah? Uh, Guardians 2. Mm. Okay. (laughs) You haven't said either Guardians yet. Have you, Anthony? Uh, I said two, yeah. I had uh, two at 25. Okay. Have you given volume one yet, Sarah? Yeah. Uh, yes. What yeah, makes I Guardians like, 2 better than volume one? I like the characterization. I like Peter's characterization a little bit better. I liked, um, I really loved when he got 
it was thinking of his mom that brought him back um, from the, the ego brainwashing. Um, I liked Rocket's characterization a little bit more too. Rocket and Nebula. Um, trash bag. Yeah. Trash <laughs> so much worse. Um, I just, I, I liked it a little bit more. Does anybody like the character of Mantis? She's fine. She's fine. She's, I mean, that, she's that's fine. like, she's fine. Like there's yeah. nothing. Esther has Thor the Dark World all the way up at 17. She, yeah, she, Esther nice. said Endgame a while ago, I think. Yeah. Yeah, she said it at 18. Wow. All right. All right. Uh, Jalen, 17. Okay, well, Matt and I will be on the same page for this one because I also have Far From Home. All right. 17. <laughs> All right. Ryan, 17. 17, I have Eternals. Nice middle of the pack movie. Okay. Uh, I'm going to need to go back through this and kind of give our actual answers and then see what we like our common list as to where things fall by number. Uh, we have officially entered the top half at number 16. I'm going right with where Anthony just was Hawkeye. I think Hawkeye had a lot of really positive things in it. And I think Hawkeye had a, a uh, again, pacing issues. On the back end, I think they saved the Kingpin reveal for too late in the show to try and wrap it up in one episode. Anthony, number 16. Guardians of the Galaxy. One? Yep. Okay. Sarah? Hawkeye. Jalen? I have uh, the first Avenger, Captain America. Okay. And Ryan? I have at 16 the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So it's a top half MCU project for you. I I, uh... I request elaboration. <laughs> I, I just I I like those two characters. I I I do recognize that it had pacing problems, but there was I think it's going to be for the Earth based MCU projects for Phase Four and beyond. It's going to be a turning point because it's going to possibly send set up the Thunderbolts. It's setting up the next trilogy of Captain America. It's setting up what's going on with Bucky. Um, it just, you know, it had a lot of things I liked in it, despite the pacing issues and, you know, the, the so-so villain to not have it in the top half. All right. At number 15, I honestly thought, I know Anthony's given this film. Uh, I thought I was going to have it higher than most of you guys. I have Black Widow at 15. I still really enjoy watching black widow i i agree with the criticisms that it came out at the wrong time that it was a little too little too late especially being the first film in phase four the fact that we jumped back to basically the time frame of captain america civil war i get those concerns however i think david harbour's character of alexei shostakov is a wonderful addition to the mcu i would love to see him fight against somebody at some point and i love 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 florence Pugh's elena belova Anthony, 15. I've got Iron Man 1. Okay. Same. Sarah. Oh, Galen also has Iron Man at 15. Okay, Sarah? 15. Um, uh, I'm, somebody's going to punch me through the screen, but Shang-Chi. Okay. Shang-Chi. <laughs> please explain yourself. I, th we're getting to the point now where... The I mean, these are all movies that um, we all love um, and we could all rewatch. Right. It, I feel like after Hawkeye, like 16 to one for me, I could just I could rewatch these things all the time. Um, so it's just it's just that there are 14 more ahead of them for me that that I love just a little bit more. I know. <laughs> so <I'm> really, <laughs> Um, but it's great. I mean, it's good. I love, I love Katie. I love, uh, Sean. Um, I'm excited to You changed your name from Sean to Sean. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll see. And, and the stuff that's setting up the 10 rings organization with Jaling, uh, running it. I mean, it's exciting, but this is do the you MCU. Where do you expect her to pop up again? I, I'm betting on armor wars. I think that feels like the most logical spot. I, I do think yeah. Disney Plus is the is the is the next landing place for her. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's fair. That's Ryan, good. 15. Um, I have at 15, Captain America, the first Avenger. Okay. Uh, I will echo everything Sarah just said. I have Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings at 14. <sighs> Anthony? 14? Yes. Uh, I got Black Panther. At 14? Wow. Mm-hmm. Why don't you explain this to me like I'm five? I just, I just heard Kara scream at you. <laughs> uh, is it because Winston Duke isn't buff enough? He's wearing too many clothes. <laughs> um, no, again, you know, we're in the, you know, when you when you start to rank these in top 15, you know, it's 100 and then 99.9, 99.8, 99.7. I just... I'm going to get criticized for my 13 and I already know, but that's fine. Um, I it's, it's a fantastic movie. You know, it introduced uh, T'Challa. Um, no, it didn't. That was Civil, Civil War. Civil War. Uh -huh. um, which have I even seen the movie? Have you I don't seen know. that? <laughs> um, yeah. It, I don't like this. I don't want to be here. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Uh, Jax, Jax is just a little upset, but he'll get over it. Uh, Sarah, 14. Um, so Black I hope Widow. this is interesting. If you're not finding this interesting, please tell us in the comments, because we went through a lot of pain and tears. <laughs> Black Widow at 14. I knew I was going to ask you to elaborate no matter where it fell on your list. So being your favorite, not just your favorite female character, it is your favorite comic book character of all time. We still haven't talked about her introduction in Iron Man 2. I know that that's coming from you. Why did Black Widow only fall at 14? Um, it was too, it was too late. It was far too late. I one of my worst fears when they announced that they were finally doing it um, was that they were only doing it to introduce the new Black Widow character. And that's exactly what they did. The only thing is I ended up absolutely loving Yelena. I don't like Yelena in the comics very much. So I was shocked by how much Florence got me to love Yelena. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the, so setting up the future for the character of Black Widow, it, I, I'm, I'm glad that they did that. We don't have to let go of her completely. Um, but it was just, it was too, too late. And it was just kind of awkward. Uh, and introduced a lot of cool characters, though. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see where that goes. Alex says he can't figure out how to compare a TV show to a movie. And that's fair. Like, that was the hardest part of mm -hmm. this. But you just got to just gotta go for it. Uh, Greg says if he only liked Marvel. Just kidding. He loves Marvel. <laughs> says, he does like Marvel. Don't listen to him. He's just in Star Wars. <laughs> uh, I do know that Greg from the Disney Fanatics is getting to go visit the Galactic Star Cruiser at disney's hollywood studios very very soon i know somebody that has stayed there i need that in my life so if anybody wants That's to cool. donate to a, a venmo of send brian to the galactic star cruiser we're, we're starting <laughs> at zero we need to get to six thousand um it's so expensive it's so expensive uh ryan okay no Jalen, 14 um i also have black widow okay. at 14 i genuinely thought i was going to have it higher than everybody but we a lot of us have black widow very high. I, I really like that movie. I mean, it's, it's, it's a solid movie. Like everyone said, you know, a little too late for it, you know, wish we got it sooner, but it is a solid movie. Isn't it, is Natasha Romanoff the only character in that film that we won't ever see again? Do we think we'll see Rachel Weiss's character again too? Cause I, I feel like David Harbour and obviously Elena are shoe ins. I, I do think Melina Vostikov is Iron Maiden in, in, in the comics. So, I mean, Marvel will do what Marvel is going to do, but I don't think we've seen the last of, of her. Fair enough. Uh, Ryan, 14. Number 14, I have Captain Marvel. That's high. That's yeah. very high. Than I, I can't say anything with my 13, so... <laughs> Uh, I'm very interested in your 13, but Ryan, I request elaboration on Captain Marvel, where it fit in. Um, so I, again, it's on David, David is correct. He says, I highly doubt we see. <laughs> 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 um, 
For overall watchability, I'll pick this movie to watch, you know, nine times out of 10. Um, I really like it. I love the shield element to be unit. Everyone knows I'm the agent of shield uh, stand here. So the, the shield elements in there, Colson fury um, are really cool. And just, you know, the empowerment of captain Marvel was just awesome. You know, I really like, it gave me, you know, going back to agent shield, like the same similar vibes to quake, like, you know, they're kind of similar with their just unrelenting power. So I didn't love Jude law in that role. Um, I did like the turn of his character being the villain, and I like the scrolls, especially Talos. I think Talos and and Nick Fury and their working relationship is very, very interesting. I think Secret Image is going to be a blast because it's going to be more of the two of them. Um, and the character turn from what the scrolls are in the comics versus what they did, I think they turned a lot, a lot of that on its head. Um, my biggest problem with that film is is rolled up to. Uh, no doubts I'm just a girl and when it was played within the film I think <laughs> it just really does not fit that scene because it's supposed to be an empowering scene and I, I feel like it undercuts everything that we've got going in that in that scene that's kind of what brings Captain Marvel down for me personally yeah. I mean other things that you know come out of that movie is we get Monica Rambo we get from that movie that's the origin of her yeah. um, we get Goose the Flurkin like one of the most adorable creatures in the MCU um, you know, we get, you know, some really cool things that are upcoming. We possibly could be getting Maria Rambo in Dr. Strange Multiverse of Madness trail. That could be her. We don't know who that is. So I've never heard thing? Maria Rambo. That's, that's a, that's a hot take right there. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. yeah, I mean, <laughs> I didn't expect to hear Captain Marvel that high. Has everybody now said Captain Marvel? I believe. Nope. Jalen still hasn't. All right. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. We'll we'll move on. I'm not going to give my 13 because Anthony really wants to give his. So number 13, Anthony. Thor. Thor first one. one. Thor yeah. one. Blonde yeah. eyebrows and all. I... Yeah, bond eyebrows. Bond, eye, bond <laughs> eyebrows especially. I Hold love on. Thor. He's my favorite character. I know Brian. I know you're a big fan of him too. But just the whole, just everything about it. Man, just the you know the expansion of the MCU to the cosmic, you know, realm of of Asgard, and I just love the mythology behind it. And it gave us Idris Elba, it gave us Loki. I mean, the, the it gave us Hawkeye. You know, the same. You know, where's the hawk? Oh, he's up in his nest. And and you know it because it felt like, you know, they're finally rounding out the Avengers when they bring in Hawkeye. You know, back back when things were a secret. And you could actually keep cameos a secret, and not not everything was on the internet. Um, plus, it came out in 2011 <laughs> when the Cardinals won the World Series, so that was a pretty big year for me. Um, yeah, I just I don't know. I love that movie. I know, you know, the the final battle of Loki bringing a giant robot to destroy a town in New Mexico isn't exactly the biggest climactic part, you know, for a villain. But I just I love it. And I, I actually watched it a couple weeks ago. I just turned it on and just looked at those pretty blonde eyebrows. The and scene that, when he rips through everybody to get to Mjolnir and is unable to lift it, that scene is is incredible. Yeah. Just, I mean, the dude's an absolute monster. And, and, and the Stan Lee cameo where, did it work? <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, I interrupted you. I apologize. Go ahead. No, that's okay. I was just going to say, and it set up the first Avengers movie, which I, I hadn't thought about it that way. So that's a that's a that's a good take. That's a good take, Anthony. Yeah. I just I again Thor is one of my favorite characters, and it's crazy how, I mean Ragnarok will come up later, and the fact that I have Thor one at thirteen, but then the Dark World is my 30, 31. <laughs> so it's crazy the evolution that his character has had. Anthony, is that you? Nice job. <laughs> Uh, at 13, I have Iron Man, the first one. Um, I don't feel it requ It requires a lot of extra elaboration. There is a special place in my heart for that film, but there are 12 projects just better, in my opinion. Sarah? Uh, Thor Ragnarok. Mm, still too low. Uh, <laughs> Jalen? This one was hard. I, I love when she laughs at herself. <laughs> <laughs> I have WandaVision. 
at 13 just because. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jalen, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I was because, still talking and I didn't even notice that I, was, <laughs> that I left. Just because, I'm sorry, just because. No, I was just, just what I have left. It was just hard to decide where to place this. And like we've said before, comparing a TV show to a movie, it's just, it's not the same. And it's just And again, you have, I mean, nobody, I mean, how many people are going back to rewatch the first episode of WandaVision? Yeah. Me, many, well, I know many you, times. but <laughs> really, you're going back and rewatching one. I mean, you know, hey Ryan, what's the population of Westview, New Jersey? <laughs> I, I I have rewatched the the last two episodes several times. That eighth episode when they go through Wanda's past and mm -hmm. every, and, and Agatha, yep. that that episode, oh, it's it the it's the me. best Marvel Disney Plus episode that's that's existed mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. Yes, agree. So it's it's good. It's just it's basically like one point whatever it yeah. is basically one through 13 are all tied for number one <laughs> we just passed the one year anniversary of agatha all along and we can't let that go unsaid jalen has wandavision at 13 brian what do you have at number 13 number 13 i have avengers age of ultron mm. that's high Mm -hmm. Jalen yeah. hasn't said Age of Ultron yet, though. I don't think Sarah. Have you given Age of Ultron yet? So just Anthony and I. All right, fair enough. Uh, okay, number twelve. I have Loki. I think Loki is again Jonathan Majors. If nothing else, the fact that they pulled that off was absolutely incredible. I love that they didn't give us a President Loki, even though throughout WandaVision everybody got their hopes up for for Mephisto and it didn't happen and they didn't do it again. The fact that they could keep Jonathan majors under wraps is way too cool here. Stephanie's a viewer of the first episode of WandaVision was hoping Agatha, Agatha would be at the Marvel day at sea. No luck. Stephanie just got back from a Marvel Disney cruise. So, um, all right, Anthony, number 12, Shang-Chi and the legend of the 10 rings. Sarah, number 12, uh, age of Ultron. Okay. Jalen, number 12. Uh, homecoming. Okay. Ryan, 12. Number 12, I have Hawkeye. Okay. Has everybody said Hawkeye yet? No, Jalen. Jalen still hasn't. Jalen valued <laughs> Yet, yeah, Jalen got rid of Aren't Garth. you glad you invited me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, number 11. I have said it forever. This is a top 10 MCU film. I have now written it down. I cannot believe that Captain America Civil War is not a top 10 MCU film for me. I love Captain America Civil War with how they balanced all of those characters, the introduction of Black Panther, the bird costume, the Bucky and breaking out of the D23 thing. I love that film. But to Jalen's point, am I going to pick it over some of these others? No, because it's sad. Like, Manchurian Candidate, put the gun down. I'm not here to do, like, all of that. I love, love, love Captain America Civil War, and it still fell at number 11 on my list. Anthony, number 11. I've got the Winter Soldier. Okay. Again, I mean, this top, this top 15 was hard. Mm -hmm. The Winter Soldier is like a 7.2 on IMDb, and I feel like everybody on IMDb missed what that movie was. That movie's so good. We'll I talk mean, about yeah, it. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's just this this is a difficult this is a difficult list. I think that's the first time the Winter Soldier's been brought up tonight. So we all have it near our top ten, if not in it. Sarah, number eleven. What if? <sighs> Whoa. Wow. God. Uh, 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 I'll more I'll you. No. <laughs> I request elaboration. Why don't you explain this to me like I'm five? Go. Ooh, um, I think this is one of the shows that will age very well. I completely I think, forgot she hadn't given us what if yet. <laughs> I, I think we are going to be getting a lot, and I've I've I have thought this before. We got Zombie Strange in that uh, Multiverse of Madness trailer. 
But I think that we are going to get a lot of things from what if in the MCU proper. Um, and I think that AC Bradley wrote female, wrote all the female characters better in six episodes of that, six or seven episodes of that show than um, a lot of the other actual MCU movies. I love Captain Carter. I love Black Widow. I love their friendship. Um, yeah. Captain Carter in live action. I'm very, very excited for it. I it almost it. seems it almost seems like a guaranteed deal now with the Multiverse of Madness poster. Uh, if she's on the Illuminati, if nothing else, um, that is very high for that show. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> uh, I mean, the the thing about it is, okay, so let's say we do get Captain Carter. Let's let's say we do get Zombie Strange. Marvel has never told stories where you have to see every single thing. So at some point, I feel like in Doctor Strange, they will explain, you know, whether it be a quick line or two about, oh, you know, there's different universes and different things have happened in all of them. So I feel like they're going to explain why it's Captain Carter, not Captain America, why there's the zombie. So, I mean, to, you to know, end, and, yeah, go ahead. I'm I'll sorry. eat my words. If what if comes back and ends up being extremely important. It's just to me, it felt so out of place because everything we we had up to that point, you know, the continuity that Marvel Studios has had, and then we get what if, and all I could think of was why do I care about any of this happening? You know, I don't think we're going to see T'Challa's Star Lord. I don't think we're ever going to see Hank yeah. Pym where he kills all the Avengers. Yeah. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, what's the point of watching this? But if it was solely to introduce Captain Carter or you know the Black Widow that you see that is friends with Captain Captain Carter and bring in a different Black Widow. Again, I'll eat my words, but... Well, and, and I think I think we might also get the Watcher. I, I think that there are... And you know what? Here, Black Widow oh. and Captain Carter taking down um, Ultron, or Vision Ultron, with their shields is, is, like, one of my top ten favorite things in the entire MCU. I just love it so much. I, with the timing of what of when what if was supposed to come out versus when multiverse of madness comes out. I think, I think Anthony's onto something by they can explain it. And I think I would have been more interested in what if I was super stoked for what if, but I thought it was going to have far more of a, of a interconnected storyline that we didn't get until what the eighth episode. I I think that when multiverse of madness was going to come out, we were going to get a lot of the same stuff. And then what if was going to fill in those blanks? And I think that would have actually landed a little bit better with me. I really like the final two episodes of what if when we had that interconnected storyline and then they explained. Because I think I think one of the most interesting things is when Ego shows up to talk to Quill at the Dairy Queen at the end of the T'Challa Star-Lord episode. And we actually never deal with that. So some of the things that they teased never actually came to fruition either. So um feige said it was essential viewing but feige is also in charge of the money piece too yeah feige also said that everything in spider-man no way home was a photoshop um feige is just he's a machine and i love that man okay uh sarah had what if at 11 Jalen 11 hawkeye okay Haley steinfeld or jamie renner or both of them? jeremy renner pizza dog pizza dog no. <laughs> realize that no, yeah. <laughs> no that and it's christmas and it's just happy makes me feel good he didn't die he didn't, didn't die. die ryan number 11 number 11 i have beef uh the first avengers movie so the 2012 avengers team up movie for Clarence. why is it so low that's low why is it so low because i have a couple things that you the rest of you already said um, in my top 10. Is it because you were 10 when it came out? <laughs> I was not 10 when it came out. I was not much older. 14. <laughs> <laughs> Insert clip of Wilford Brimley. Um, okay. Uh, we have entered the top 10. And I at 10 have Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, I can talk about Michael Keaton's Vulture until the cows come home. But there's just nine films that I would put over it. Spider-Man Homecoming, 
and I love, love that movie. Anthony, number 10. I have WandaVision at number 10. Okay. Uh, Holly has Captain Marvel at 10. Jalen still hasn't given us Captain Marvel. Sarah, number 10. Black Panther. That sounded like it hurt you. It did because, I mean, Jalen already said this one through 10 are, are basically tied for me <laughs> for number one. So, okay. Jalen, number 10. Uh, Age of Ultron. Why so high? I, I feel like it's the underrated Avengers movie. Granted, it's my fourth ranked event out of all the Avengers movies. But I feel like it's just really underrated. I think people give it a hard time because of the Barton farm. But I really like the Barton farm. Um, and I love the opening sequence. It's one of my favorite openings of just them. Yeah. You get them all fighting right that away. tracking shot. That, yeah. Yes. Good. And language. I love the... See, that tracking... The, yeah, language is good. That tracking yeah. shot was... was not. I, I'm not going to say ruined because it's a great tracking shot. Mm -hmm. But it was in so much of the marketing that it really fell flat for me when when we saw it in the film and the fact that it showed up in the first 10 minutes. Yeah, and that's um, why you just don't be a fan at the beginning and then you don't know any of the marketing. <laughs> um, shout out to Paul Herman at the MCU Fan Show. He is person number one when it talks about being against the Barton family farm. He also really doesn't like Chris Pratt's Peter Quill. Uh, Ryan, number 10. At number 10, I have Thor Ragnarok. Um, if for nothing else than the scene where Thor meets Korg, that is just <laughs> um, one of my favorite gifts to use is uh, the scene of Korg uh, kicking at Loki's hologram. <laughs> oh, <it's a> ghost. <laughs> No, no need to be afraid unless you're made of scissors. Just <laughs> scissors. <laughs> oh man! Unless you're three vampires that are huddled together. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, at number eight, I have Sarah's. Num or excuse me. At number nine, I apologize. I have Sarah's number ten. I have Black Panther at number nine. Much to the chagrin of my son, there are 1.3 billion reasons why this movie matters. This movie matters to a lot of people for a lot of very valid reasons. It really hurts me to watch this film knowing that Chadwick Boseman was going through what he was going through and that we're never going to see him again. And that's not fair to drag this film down. But when we're doing this type of exercise, it landed at number nine. And I it's just what I had to do. Anthony, number nine. I have Ant-Man. That's high. Yeah, Very high. I love it. I absolutely love it. I feel like it's just that type of movie. It gave us Luis. I mean, it, it's just so lighthearted and fun and funny. And I remember it was tasting with my cousin Nesco. You know, but there was a rose that saved the day. It was delightful. And I remember my wife went to go see it with me, and I told her I was like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna go see Ant Man." And she's like, "The guy that turns into a an ant." And I go, "Yeah, it'll be fine." And then she ended up loving it, and it's one of her favorites now. So I feel like that definitely got her more invested in the MCU as well. But yeah, I just anytime it's on, I turn it on. You can turn it on at any point. You know, I like the the visualization of Yellow Jacket, even though it was the typical, you know, superhero versus the evil doppelganger. But I love it. Kara says Ant Man. I'm just gonna leave it <laughs> Uh okay. Sarah, number nine. Number nine is Iron Man two. Go ahead. <laughs> I So this one, I tried not to rely on my emotional connection to the movies, but my top 10 is basically all just my emotional connection to the movies. So Iron Man 2 was the first one that, the first MCU film that I saw in theaters. Um, and it, it, it hooked me. It hooked me on Tony's story. And it hooked me on the possibility of seeing more kick butt female characters on the big screen, um, not just in the MCU, but period. Because uh, up until that point, we had 
you know, Mila Jovovich, Angelina Jolie, Charlize Theron, um, there weren't very many. And that kind of, that opened the door, I feel like, in the MCU. Um, and it got me so excited for more. And I, that's why I have to put this one up so high. When Natalie Rushman kicks the crap out of Happy Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You could have you could have just said only that and I would have I would have accepted it. I I very much appreciate you having this that high because you let your emotions into it. And I appreciate that because that's what the MCU is, is we have these emotional connections. And that's why we love this film franchise so, so much. Jalen, number nine. Uh, I also have Black Panther at number nine. Brian, uh, I'm going to get canceled for this one. Uh, Avengers Infinity War. Oh! <laughs> Go ahead. You um, don't even need to put up the cards. Oh you know God. you need to explain yourself. Uh, <laughs> I ran out of my five a long time ago. I'm glad I abolished that rule. I just... It's a amazing movie, and again, it's splitting hairs. It is the and most I'm, rewatchable film in the MCU. In the, absolutely incorrect. Um <laughs> I, this, the movie, it ends on a cliffhanger and it's uh, obviously we know now in what's going to happen, but it's, I don't know how to put it. It kind of just gives me anxiety watching it because you're knowing that what we went through at the time, we waited for a year to know what was going to happen after that movie. And that just thinking about waiting and the drive home from the theater gives me anxiety. You know the thing that gives me anxiety is I think about what if COVID hit between Infinity War and Endgame. I I thought of that too. (laughs) Oh my gosh. They would have just released it. I'd be like, just give it to me. Don't Don't even wait. There's three billion reasons why they wouldn't have. (laughs) You know, as much as Sarah's talking about, you know, the emotional connection she has with his movies, if Infinity War elicited that much of an emotional response from you, Ryan, that's huge. The fact that a movie that has a talking tree and a talking <laughs> raccoon it also and, isn't it also isn't a cliffhanger the the main character of the film wins yes and i know but we don't like the main character of the film <laughs> like that's the point is he's the main character but that's the same thing as like i don't know like, <laughs> like do you, are you happy with the end oh. <laughs> Dang. I, I am I, happy with the result because I no, know. No, no. You, you snapped me before you let me finish. Are you happy <laughs> with the end result of, of Joker? Joker. It's a villain. A, I don't give a crap about that film. Okay, well, that's because it's a villain movie. It's not that I don't give a crap about this movie. I'm not happy with the end result of the movie because the villain wins. So I could love this movie because it's a team-up movie and it was very well executed, but I could still have it a little lower on my list because of the emotional feelings I had after the movie. <laughs> You know what is we're all legitimately mad at him and he's legitimately mad at us. That's what I think. <laughs> I'm like. I'm like, oh, yeah, he's getting kind of heated here. <laughs> he's like, this is my opinion. It's, right. Right. it's only going to get worse through the top 10. It might. It might. You had Avengers Infinity War at number nine. That's awesome and not great at all. <laughs> um, okay. At number eight, I have Thor Ragnarok. Uh, when we talk rewatchability, this is a top three rewatchable film for me. Uh, Taika Waititi is an absolute genius. Everything that man touches turns to gold. If you have not watched what we do in the shadows, first watch the film, then watch the show. When Luke Skywalker shows up as part of the vampires, it is just incredible. (laughs) Um, Thor Ragnarok. I don't think I need to say anything else. Uh, my wife even had Korg and Meek in her Mount Rushmore of relationships in the MCU. (laughs) Anthony, number eight. I have Spider-Man homecoming. Okay. You were getting mad at everybody else for having homecoming so low. So I will give you, I had it at 10. So you have it higher than anybody else. I would just, what is it about that film? It's just, uh, it's fun. You know, there aren't really any big stakes, you know, you know, Spider-Man's not going to get taken out. Um, Vulture is great. You know, that, that scene to the, the dance is one of the most powerful villain, you know, protagonist antagonist scenes that we've had. Um, you know, the fact that they were able to get Keaton after it was rumored he was attached and then he was no longer attached and then he came back. Um, you know, just the, the 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 true, you know, introduction of Spider-Man. I know, yes, I know he was in Civil War, but to actually have him have his own movie 
and you know just to to see him sitting on the the fire escape eating the the churro calling happy like you know hey hey i want some more stuff and then you know to see the growth that he has by the end of it when tony says you know hey this is your shot buddy and he's like eh, i think i want to be the the kid on the ground so it's just a it's a good movie it's fun it's rewatchable you can again pick it up at any point and and have a good time watching it the amount of audience gasps when michael keaton answers that front door when he goes to pick up her from yeah. when he picks up liz from the dance that oh. probably mm-hmm. rivals the amount of audience gasps when I put Avengers Infinity War at number nine. <laughs> <laughs> you are vastly overestimating the reach of our audience. <laughs> Sarah, did I interrupt you again? I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, I was just going to say that Come On Peter Come on, Peter is one of my favorite MCU scenes. Mm-hmm. Get up, Spider-Man. It's so good. Yeah. It's in our introduction for a reason. Holly says, that's like saying Empire Strikes Back isn't the best episode. If you need more of that, tune into Babu's <laughs> <flipping back. laughs> every other Sunday night, at least until Obi-Wan Kenobi comes out, because we will then get back to weekly Sunday night episodes when Obi-Wan comes back. Um, all right, let's keep going. On to number seven, I have Avengers. Number what number? Oh, what? I haven't done eight yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Sarah, did you give eight? Anthony gave Homecoming. Sarah, eight. I'm sorry. Eight is Endgame for me. Ooh. Jalen looks like she agrees. Is Endgame eight for you, Jalen? No, but I could see. Okay. It's close. <laughs> why Why so low? Um, I will say this. The first time I saw it in the theater, I truly, this is the truth, I don't remember hardly anything after Black after Black Widow died. Yep. I, it was truly traumatic. <laughs> it was, <laughs> I, and, and I couldn't, you know, I had tickets for, I think, the next night to see it again, and I couldn't go because uh, I didn't want to see that scene again. But I did go a couple days later, and I was glad I did because the, just the audience experience during Portal's, uh, I mean, it's nothing compares to that. So, yeah, but nope, nothing. It's still top ten though. I I didn't think about the Black Widow connection. That that makes yeah. It's Jalen number eight. Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Oh, there it is. <laughs> there Bucky. it is. Why? Bucky. That's why. <laughs> That's it. Just Bucky. No. He's the main reason. Um, I'm no, no I just, the soldier. <laughs> I just I love the character growth of both him and Sam in this show. You know, you see the struggles both of them go through. Um, see, thank you, Holly. Also top 10. And Kara. <laughs> um, yes, I agree. The flag smashers, you know, weren't the greatest. You know, I didn't even care about Sharon Carter in her other movies. So she didn't, you know, I can look past her being in the show. Um, but yeah, like I said, just the character growth of Sam and Bucky and just the emotion that you feel watching this show, at least that I feel watching this show. You can listen to the archives of Earth's Mightiest Weirdos. I will absolutely pound the drum that I called Sharon Carter as the power broker in episode two. Maybe three. I can't remember when she was introduced because I don't rewatch that show. <laughs> Oh, okay, I, you you warned us that it was going to be. I told you. That's very very high. Um, now everybody has to have said the Falcon and the Winter Soldier by now. Okay, Ryan, number eight. Number eight, I have Doctor Strange. That's low. I request low. You haven't given it yet. No, I did. Oh, Maybe that's high. high. Never yeah, mind. Yeah, I was like, wait a second. <laughs> I'm stupid. Why? I already said I was stupid with Loki at twenty. Why is it so high? This is probably my number, like in my top five of most rewatched movies. I can't wait for Maya to hear that you have it at eight. (laughs) Oh, yeah, she's going to. She'd have it at 32. Um, She'd have it at 33. This. I just love this movie. The the mysticism. I think when I was going through my list, I kind of ranked them by genre as well. You know, like Earth based, team up, cosmic, and mysticism. And. The, the mysticism ones kind of ranked in the top 10, top 12 for me. Um, and the cosmic ones fell lower down on the list. And But you had I, Loki at 20. 
Like Loki's like Loki's Loki. cosmic more than mysticism. All right. So, but I have, <laughs> you know, you'll see the rest of the list. But um, <laughs> well, yeah. I, I legit need everybody on here to send me their list because I'm gonna like average them out and release a, a full top ten. So, but yeah, Doctor Strange number eight. All right, uh, number seven for me. I have the first Avengers film. Um, it's I love what that film means, but there are six films that that by my calculations just came in above it. Um, the tracking shot, those 45 seconds that have Iron Man's repulsor rays off of Cap's shield, and then it ends with with Hulk hitting Thor. It's incredible. Everything about it, Tony's sacrifice. Tony was willing to sacrifice himself long before people caught on that Tony was willing to sacrifice himself. I love what this film means. Um, it might be the Joss Whedon factor that drops it just a few spots for me, but I am comfortable with calling Avengers at number seven. Anthony, number seven. We got Civil War, number seven. As do I. Same. <laughs> Jalen, number seven. I have Captain Marvel mm. at number Ooh. seven. And I will, <laughs> yes, I will explain. So we've talked a lot about the emotions you feel watching these movies for the first time. And I remember watching Captain Marvel and just feeling so empowered after watching that. Um, I was like, girl power, let's go. Is it the best movie? No. But I rewatch it all the time, and I feel empowered every single time I watch it. Would um, you say it's straight fire? Like it is straight fire. Four? It is better than Wonder Woman 84. <laughs> oh, everything is better than Wonder Woman 84. <laughs> Jalen, was that, was that one of your first MCU movies in the theater? No. So Black Panther okay. was. Well, I guess technically Avengers, but I mean, that was I didn't know anything. Yeah. going into it but then black panther was i didn't know you were that new to the mcu fandom mm -hmm. yeah 2018 you, yeah you can blame um negative 30 degree weather over new year's eve <laughs> for me watching all the mcu movies <laughs> thank you new year's eve <laughs> becoming a fan so um yeah it's just I zero just, judgment i just didn't know it was that new for you it is very yeah <laughs> i'm mean, very new barney the dinosaur is better than wonder woman 84 that is correct holly Man, Wonder Woman 84. Let's do that on Weirdos. Just rip that movie to shreds. Anthony, no, you gave us your number seven. We Everybody had Civil War. Every, everyone, and then, yeah, and then yeah I must have said Civil War. Okay, perfect. Number six for me, Guardians of the Galaxy, volume one. Um, as standalone films go, I think that this film just does everything right, as evidenced by what we just went through with Peacemaker. I think James Gunn is one of the most brilliant guys out there and what he's able to do, the story he's able to tell in a weird, unpredictable fashion really, really works for me. And again, I said it earlier that adult group is better than baby group. I, and I love, I love this film. So John C. Riley, the only bummer about him in that role as Denarian day is the fact that he's now already been cast in the MCU and we can't get him in something else. I love Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 so, so, so much. And it gave us our first real shot at Thanos. Um, number six, Anthony. I've got Avengers Endgame. Ooh. Same here. Okay. All right. Uh, Sarah, number six. One Division. Okay. Ryan. Uh, Black Panther. Uh, I think, no, Anthony said it. I think I'm just now, I'm, I can't, I'm surprised I'm going to be the first next person to say this. I, at number five, I have Captain America, the winter soldier, the fall of shield, especially really unexpected because that was 16 episodes into the show of agents of shield. <laughs> and, uh, that was quite the surprise, but it was the introduction of the Russos into the MCU they absolutely nailed it. They gave us Abed Nadir, and it was wonderful. And I think Sharon Carter in that film is awesome, and I love how she fits in. I struggle with her just a little bit in Civil War, and then I really struggle with her in The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. But to me, 
Captain America the Winter Soldier is the perfect film, yet there are four others that I prefer over it. Anthony, number five. I have Avengers. Okay. Sarah, number five. No Way Home. It's the first mention of Spider-Man No Way Home tonight. Okay. Why did it not get as high as it did sounds like for the rest of us um it's a great film it is i, I really thought it was going to be top three but then they're mm -hmm. just like i mean top five it's everything is you know so close yeah so when we're talking I, top five mcu we're 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 yeah. approaching like top 15 top 10 films uh, in my in my entire ranking, like top five yeah. MCU, so that's fair. Okay, Jalen, number five. Uh, Shang Chi. Wow, that's high. Has anybody else not said Shang Chi yet? Ryan still hasn't given us Shang Chi. That's man, Shang Chi is biased. So so good. It's, <laughs> it is, but it. it <laughs> I I have watched it a lot on Disney Plus since it's come out, um, and I just <laughs> I love it every time. And obviously, I mean, I got. I got my own Morris. It is not recency bias. <laughs> monkeys were actually riding horses. I did. <laughs> yes. When in fact, they were simply acting. <laughs> riding horses. I still can't get my head around it, to be honest. The best thing Disney Plus ever did was this IMAX ratio upgrade on these mm -hmm. MCU films, too. I love it. Shang-Chi and number five for Jalen. Ryan, number five. Number five. I have WandaVision. At number four, uh, much to everybody's surprise, I have WandaVision. Um, WandaVision, everything that that show meant to me, one, it got me into Marvel podcasting, and Earth's Mightiest Weirdos was born through that show. I legitimately love that show. I didn't love everything that came with it, but what it stands for of bringing the MCU to Disney+, Plus, the character of of Wanda Maximoff and the surprise that they pulled off with white vision and showing how powerful that that character of Wanda is, is super, super important. And it gives us to that line, that most powerful line in the most recent Dr. Strange trailer of when you break the rules, you're the hero. When I do it, I can't remember exactly what she says, but she said that doesn't seem fair. That's all based upon what happened in Wanda vision. And I can't wait to see where it goes. She's incredible. As an actress, I love the style in which it was filmed. Everything that it did just worked for me. Catherine Hahn as Agatha Harkness. I can't wait for her show. I love, love, love WandaVision. Anthony, number four. I have Eternals, at number four. Wow. Holy buckets. Sarah's disappointed that you already said Eternals and we haven't reached our top three yet. Eternals. <laughs> okay, I will let the two of you wax poetic on Eternals once we find out where it is on Sarah's list. I don't <laughs> I do not think it'll be number one, but she might surprise us. Sarah, number four. Uh Winter Soldier for everything you said. I love that movie. I do too. I love it. That so opening much. is just so good. And, and the, the friendship of Steve is... the friendship of Steve and Natasha in that film. Yes, yes. Excellent. And so, and Sam. And so it's the introduction of Sam. Specimen. Okay. <laughs> Jalen, number four. Uh, no Way Home. Okay. Ryan, number four. I also have No Way Home at number four. Okay. I have Spider-Man No Way Home at number three. The Peter Portal scene in Ned's Lola's house. Uh, legitimate cheers just as loud as Captain America picking up Mjolnir. Um, I, I love... I, I do love that people have come around on Andrew Garfield. Um, I'm one of them. I don't care that much for the amazing Spider-Man one or two. <coughs> and that has nothing to do. Well, he's a little bit robotic in the first one, but that has very little to do with Andrew Garfield. But the Tom Holland is my favorite Spider-Man and he shines just as bright as those other two, but the nostalgia and everything that Spider-Man no way home meant, I legitimately cried and I will not even be afraid to admit it anthony number three this is this is where it got tough because all the top three you know, i can put any of them on and be just as happy uh 
Thor Ragnarok. Man, that's has everybody now said Ragnarok? I believe everybody has now. Mm -hmm. Okay, Thor Ragnarok. Yes. Anything we haven't said about Ragnarok that you want to make sure gets said? No. It's just again. I mean, it echoes everything that I've said about Homecoming, about Ant Man. You know, it's just fun. Taika Waititi is a gem. You know, just the 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 tonal shift that we got from Thor, from the you know even the the seriousness of the first one, and then the dumpster fire of the second one, and then to see him, you know, the the whole friend from work, and just you know, let's uh oh god, when him and Loki are in the elevator, yeah, need help, the whole get yeah, help. get help, I mean, just following following the, that very heartfelt conversation, yeah, yeah, just the the humor of Chris Hemsworth, and they finally just let him, you know, spread his wings. Introduction of Valkyrie. So I mean, there's. Oh, anything. oh, it's a crown. I thought that it was a big eyebrow. <laughs> anything with uh, Jeff Bridges. Jeff, Jeff Goldblum. Bridges, Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Bridges. <laughs> Jeff Bridges. Yeah. And Jeff Bridges. Any, any, it, just any Jeff. Any Jeff. In, in <laughs> shout out to shout out to Jeff Winger. Uh, <laughs> see you later, new Doug. Okay, perfect. Uh, Ragnarok at three. Sarah, number three. Uh, Infinity War. Okay. Same. Infinity War. Okay. Ryan? Uh, number three, I have Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. What was it about that film that made it a top three for you? I think, again, it's the mysticism. There's a lot of, of that in this movie. Um, I just, I, I've rewatched this movie probably six or seven times in the time it's been out now. I just, I really loved this movie. It's funny. It's serious. It's a lot of action. Um, it's just awesome. It's, and I, credit scenes too are awesome. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Mars. And one of the best villains. Yep. I felt legitimately bad when I put it at 14 until I looked at the 13 projects above it. And I felt that I could, that I could justify it. I have a special spot in my heart for Shang-Chi because of just how long that that film's been in my life i'm excited to see what comes of the abomination stuff because there has to be they can't ignore that forever uh number two i have the most rewatchable film in the mcu and that is avengers infinity war um, because i know what comes out of it the the tiebreaker for me was just the the first viewing experience a legitimate gut punch it, it took until Black Panther disappeared for me to come back to reality to know that this wasn't a permanent thing. Um, it It's an absolute gut punch every time. I think that the snap is going to resonate with my son. Like, I mean, I wasn't old enough, but but Luke, I, I am your father. When Darth Vader said that, that is one of the most pop culture moments in film history. And no matter who you like, in the MCU, they have a spot to play in Avengers Infinity War. And the way that they bring Steve and the Nomad Avengers back into it, it just works so good. Kara, it has bearded cap. Um, it's just <laughs> that film has everything and it does not stop for 152 minutes. It's that film is so legitimately good. Like I said, it's the most rewatchable film in the MCU for me. Anthony, number two. We've got Infinity War as well. I'm Groot. I am Steve Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> you copied my beard. Yeah, Thor's Thor's entrance. Just yeah, like like you said, I. It's gonna teeter between one and two for most rewatchable for me. Mm -hmm. There is one thing in Infinity War that doesn't work for me, and it's when Thor shows up and and Bruce's head is floating inside of. The <laughs> <laughs> like it just doesn't like bit but thor's entrance tree i can't find the handle the amount of surprises when do you guys remember when red skull showed back up in infinity war and just losing your mind because i did mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh sarah number two eternals you two go ahead anthony had <laughs> sarah had it at two i will start with sarah and then we'll give anthony his chance I just, uh, one of my favorite filmmakers of all time is Terrence Malick. One of my favorite movies is Tree of Life. From the opening shot of this movie, 
um, I, I just, I turned to Robert who was sitting next to me and, <laughs> and I just said, I'm, I'm in, I'm in, this is it. Yes. So I think it is as close to an art house movie as we'll get in the MCU. And I love art house movies, but as somebody who identifies within the LGBTQ community, um, what this means for representation in the future of the MCU. Um, and not just for me, but literally everyone who watches it, we've said it so many times, everyone who watches this will see a, a piece of themselves in one of these heroes somehow. Um, and just that any kid watching will be able to identify with a hero just makes me so excited that, there, that, that this exists for those kids now. Um, it just means everything to me. Even though I had Eternals at 23, one of the episodes I'm most proud of of Earth Mightiest Weirdos is our Eternals spoiler discussion that you, Mark, and Alex and I had um, about that film and and what it means to you specifically. I knew you were going to have it high. I did not expect it to be a top two. Um, but thank you, Sarah. I really appreciate that. Anthony, anything she didn't say? Um, just, you know, the, the theme of love throughout that entire film and not just romantic love, but friendship and, you know, the, there's nothing that I can say that is anything more important than what Sarah said about representation, but, you know, just to, to even hear interviews of, uh, Brian Terry Henry about, you know, never thinking he would be able to see himself as a superhero. And uh, on the episode of um, Assembled. Assembled. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, he talks about how he would not look at himself in the costume. You know, they kept putting all the all the straps on and all the buttons. And he was there like, you're going to have to look at yourself. And he was like, no. And eventually he did. And he said he turned around and he just screamed and just cr ugly cried. And, you know, was was so excited to be able to see himself. And, you know, he even when he got the part, he asked Marvel there. He was like, hey, how much weight do you want me to lose? And they said, we don't want you to lose anything. We want you for you. And he, he just, you know, thought that was the, the coolest thing that, you know, he didn't have to change who he was. Unlike Kumail, who was just looking for a reason to get absolutely jacked. <laughs> <laughs> um, which was part of the reason why he said he wanted to do it, because, you know, he just he was like, oh, I got I, I was able to just go to the gym every day and then be in this movie. And then, you know, just the representation of him and the whole Bollywood scene. And, you know, Usain Bolt can finally see himself in a movie as somebody who's super fast. <laughs> Makari, um, you know, just the, the character of Makari and, you know, the um, with her being deaf and her husband also working on the film and, you know, just Chloe Zha and how she was able to create this movie. And I, I feel like it was well-balanced considering we were given 10 new characters. Lauren Ridloff's husband also working on Hawkeye with, with Alakwa Cox is, mm -hmm. is, is really neat too. Yeah. I mean, there's just so much, you know, positivity behind that movie of the, the making of it, the, just all the characters. And, and I don't know why it's, it's hard for me to, to fully put into words that it's just, I, I love it. And I'm not a big art house movie guy. I'm just, you know, I turned it on. What was it last Thursday night? I just had it on, you know, seeing the, the relationship between Gilgamesh and Thena and to be able to get Angelina Jolie in a Marvel movie. I mean, there, there had to be something special. You know what put it at 23 for me? Julie sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting for the, the tapes. I'm, I'm waiting for the tapes from uh, Kingo's Valet. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Karun needs to, needs to, we need to see his art house film. Um, I think uh, my favorite relationship that came out of Eternals is the relationship that you, Anthony, have with that film because you were like, it's okay, like, it's good. And then you're like, I can't stop watching this film. <laughs> <laughs> like, had yeah. we done this like two months after that movie came out, it would have been in the teens for sure. Like, yeah. it would have been at four. As I just, and it, you know, I went to see it opening night and then I was like, yeah, it was okay. And then just the more I thought about it, which you had was just so... had a baby, so you couldn't go out to the movies like right away again. Yeah. And it was just so weird because, you know, you see a movie like, you know, Ragnarok and you laugh about it for a couple of days after, but you never think about it 
or you see a movie like or you know a show like loki and you're like yeah that was cool and then you talk about it for a day or two but for whatever reason eternals i just could not get it out of my mind couldn't stop and then i bought all the funko pops and went into debt so <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, Jalen, number two. Um, I have Avengers, the first Avengers movie. Okay, Ryan, number two. Number two, I have Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Okay. Uh, most of us, I think, I, I think we all have the same at number one, at least the top row, I believe. No, Sarah already gave it too. Uh, number one, my number one film, because of the greater meaning, the re the viewing experience that I had the very first time, what this movie means to me and what it means to the MCU, even redeeming my number 31 of Thor The Dark World, Avengers Endgame is the number one MCU film, and I am very comfortable at putting it there. Anthony, number one. Inhumans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I went with No Way Home. I feel like it was just a culmination of 20 years of a character. Where did, where did you have Endgame? I had Endgame at five. Okay. So No no Way Home is your number one. Yeah. Okay. No, I did it at six. Okay. I can't keep them all straight. <laughs> yeah. it's. I'm looking at my list like, where did I have it at? Um, <laughs> no, I think, you know, my relationship to Spider-Man was that was one of the first movies I remember seeing as a kid in theaters. And then to see Tobey Maguire have his three and Andrew Garfield have his two and Tom Holland to have his three now. And then to to bring it all together was was a was a spectacle, was a, a sight to see. And I, I don't know if it's going to be more rewatchable than Infinity War. Time will tell on that. But again, my my top three, you could surprise me with any three of them and I will be a, a happy camper. I have two things loaded from No Way Home. I don't know what they are, so let's find out together. Wait, 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 wait. I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's a word. Let's find out what this one is. So you like make your own web fluid in your body. <laughs> I'd rather not talk about this. No, I don't mean but to. Are you teasing me? No, 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 no. He's not teasing you. It's just that we can't do that. So naturally, we're curious <laughs> how your web situation works. Sarah, number one. Um, this is just because of the emotional experience I had watching it. It's one of the first films I saw with, um, my niece and nephews in the theater. Um, and just what it meant for the future. It was the first glimpse we, we got of what Kevin Feige wanted to do. And it just got me so pumped for for the future and that's the first avengers movie and it's just, it's just a great movie rewatchability is so off, off the charts so. It's so good. i stand by it being at seven but man it's good Jalen, number one number one i have winter soldier as my number one um the elevator fight scene the elevator fight scene um i'd say this is the movie that made me a fan so when I was doing my um, marathon, I liked all the movies. I watched them in chronological order was how I decided to watch them. Release um, order or, or, or I guess no. back then it was only what, like seven films? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Um, and like I said, I liked all the ones that came before Winter Soldier, but watching <laughs> Thanks, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> and it says Jalen has redeemed herself. <laughs> um, Winter Soldier made me a fan. And after I watched it, I immediately started it over. So I guess that's the benefit of watching it at home for the first time. Is <laughs> you can <laughs> watch it straight again. So I love and, and that's part of the reason. That's the other thing that put Avengers Endgame number one for me is getting because that elevator fight scene is legit. And then in an end game, when he ends up in the elevator with all the same people and then it <laughs> turns around with the hill Hydra, it's so man, it's just good. It's just, yeah. Oh, I, I can't Jaylen, believe I have, go ahead. Jalen, was that your introduction to Sebastian Stan in the MCU? Uh, no. Well, cause I watched first Avenger first. Oh, okay. okay. In my marathon. He looked very movies. different. But yeah, he was much to be different. honest, 
it didn't register in my brain. When, really? When I well, yeah, when I saw Winter yeah. Soldier first, it didn't register that that was this Bucky from First Avenger. Mm-hmm. Um, and what really clicked it was when I watched Civil War. That's when I was like, oh, it's Bucky, and then. It went from there. Ooh, Love him from there. So. <laughs> now Bucky is on her mind. Yes, and, and all the time. Out. Ryan, your number one MCU project. Uh, it is the same as yours for many of the same reasons. An unbelievable theater viewing experience. Uh, Avengers Endgame. When Mjolnir showed back up on screen and Thor saying, I'm still worthy. One, if you want to break down just that scene and what that means to his character, Mm -hmm. legitimately good. But the second Mjolnir showed back up on screen, I knew Steve was going to pick it up. And that scene never, ever disappoints me, even a little bit. Portals is starting with On Your Left all the way up through Avengers Assemble. Chills, Mm -hmm. literal chills every, every single time. Well, we did it. I hope we did it well. (laughs) If you enjoyed having Anthony, um, join us again next Monday night, back at our normal time at 8.30. We are going to have one of This Diz Life's patrons, Beth Monaco, on. She is new to the MCU. She's not knowing where she starts within these 32 MCU projects. So we're doing an MCU 101. Um, Holly says to remind her to tell me her MCU story. She poo pooed watching them for a long time. <laughs> Holly, please come next Monday night so we can talk about MCU 101 and why you poo pooed it for so long. And Beth's going to come with questions all the way up from viewing order all the way through who are these characters? Why should I care? Why do I, why does everybody care? Because as we talked about it earlier, Sarah and her emotional attachments is what makes this the greatest film franchise out there, except for, Mm -hmm. except for star Wars. But uh, from an emotional standpoint, the Marvel's better. I just care about star Wars more. That's, that's it. Um, But from a consistency standpoint, nobody does it better than Kevin Feige and Marvel studios. Anthony, anything you need to plug? Nothing at all. See you next Monday night, Sarah at the nerd Emporium. Check her out on Instagram, Sarah, anything else? All right. Jalen. Thank you so much for joining us two weeks in a row. And Ryan, are the New York Rangers going to catch the Colorado Avalanche? No, but how are the New York Rangers looking? <laughs> Rangers are looking good. Um, we're sitting in the seventh spot in the NHL. Um, trade deadline's coming up, so I'll, uh, I took off from work that day. So, <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, you were in the building when Zendaya and Tom Holland were also in the building. Oh Everybody gosh. was freaking out about that rock on her finger, except for the fact that nobody noticed it was on her right hand. Yeah, uh, they should have been noticing it to figure out what hand it was on. <laughs> thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. I can't believe we did it. But until next time, for the children.